Right, so I'm hopefully going to teach you blood gases like you've never been taught before. And I'm just going to start with a very simple case. Everyone see that? Mr. EW, 63-year-old man, you can see in the ED, he's been unwell for two weeks, and this is his blood gas. Anyone want to take me through what they can see? Metabolic acidosis, yep. Any more on that? High CO2. High CO2. Mixed picture. So potentially a mixed picture. So these are your choices. Which is the best describer of this acid-based disturbance? Vicky, you said? I'd say C, personally. C. Mixed med and I totally agree. It's a mixed metabolic and respiratory acidosis. Okay, to understand blood gases, you've got to get your nomenclature right. Try to save the word osis for the process and use the word emia for the pH. For the because that means that when you use osis as the process, you're thinking pathology. Now, medical students will give you a very sort of, that's a metabolic acidosis. That's it. That's about as far as they can take that. You've got to look for, there's often at least two disorders, sometimes even three disorders in an acid-based, um, you know, and talking about pH, bicarb, CO2 here, not so much talking about oxygen. And that's for you. And at the moment you start thinking, Osis is the process, it's a pathological process. You start looking for the second process rather than just going for closing. I've found one, I'm done. And there's no metabolic acidosis for respiratory alkalosis compensation. Osis is always pathological. It's really, and therefore, you can't have respiratory alkalosis compensation. What you're saying there is it's a mixed. And therefore, you really boil down to it's either appropriate compensation or it's mixed. Right. So there's a very simple gas, and we'll just go through it, and we can say there's an acidemia or alkalemia. It's acidemia. What's the major process? Right at the beginning, we said metabolic acidosis. And is it a mixed, or is there appropriate compensation? And that's what the majority of this talk is going to be about, is trying to work out what's a mixed and what's appropriate compensation. Okay, who knows this formula? It's the, any analyses? Nethus in the room? Anderson Hassenbach. Okay, who's doing their exam soon? What's the, what's the PKA of the Henderson Hasselbach exam, of the equation? 6.1. Yeah, 6.1, exactly. What's the normal bicarb, anyone? 22 to 26. Why, do you always, why does everyone always remember a range? I, that, that's like you know, doubling <laughs> the amount of numbers you've got to know in your head. 24, I'll go for 24. What's a normal CO2? 5. Five. See those little square brackets? What are they telling you? Concentration. concentration. Do we measure concentration? What did you just give me? You gave me partial pressure. How do I find out what the concentration is? What do I need to know to work out the concentration if I only know the partial pressure? Solubility. Solubility, yeah. So we look at CO2 concentration, it's solubility times PCO2, and works out to be 5.3 times the solubility, which equals 20. Log 20. What's a log of 20, anyone? Two. Two? Anyone? There's a trick here. 1.3. 1. 1. 1.3, how come? Yeah. Uh, because 6.1 plus the log of 20 must add up to the normal pH. Yeah. Have you heard this talk before? Once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So why am, I, why am I torturing you with this? I'm torturing with this because the body wants to maintain that ratio of 20 under all circumstances, such that if bicarb goes up, CO2 must go down, no, no. up, <laughs> and everyone always falls for that. If CO2 goes down, bicarb must go down. It's actually idiot proof, because if you ever see a gas where one is going up and one is going down, mixed process, just like that. Look at the end of the room, you can, if you've got good eyesight. Bicarb going up, CO2 going down, mixed process. CO2 going down, bicarb going up, mixed process. If they're ever going in opposite directions, it's always a mixed process because the body wants them to follow each other. That's what compensation will make it do. So when you look at Mr. EW, you just go, one up, one down, that's mixed process. And because in your head, osis is the process, that you start to think, not only is this not compensating, what you've got is two pathological processes happening. Two things you need to tackle, not just one, 
you've got two problems. And that's the power of it, and that's why it's practical. But what is appropriate compensation? So, who thinks appropriate compensation equals a normal pH? You all do, because that's all what you were yeah, taught at medical yeah, school. Yeah. <laughs> and it's what we were taught, and it's actually acutely, it's garbage. Okay, chronically, because the majority of people who taught you were either physiologists or respiratory um, physicians, that they didn't do any acute medicine, such that they always thought it was. But actually, only chronically is compensation full. Acutely, you never have a normal pH when you're an acid, and, unless you're normal, unless there is no acid-base disturbance. So if you've ever got a normal pH, you actually have a mixed process. You must have a metabolic acidosis and probably a very severe respiratory alkalosis on top, which is normalizing the, um, the pH. And that's very powerful, because too often people look at a normal pH and go, oh, they're fixed, they're, do they're done, and that's what they're looking for, and that's actually not what appropriate compensation is about. And what I'm going to teach you is what is appropriate compensation. Right, going to step, got all that in your head, we're going to step back a little bit, and I'm going to take you through the three acid-based schools in the world. First of all, there's the Sigurd Anderson group from Copenhagen. They're the guys who came up with base success. Anyone seen, seen that? The Sigurd Anderson nomogram? So it's very complicated. It's got things like a buffer base and bicarb, and all there's a base success, we know about that. And something else over here, which is very, gets very confusing. Why is it so complicated? And it's so complicated because what they are is CO2 and bicarb are linked, as, as in the sense that they um, are linked upon the equation. So if CO2 goes up, then bicarb will have to go up because of mass effect on the equation. And what they sought out to do in Copenhagen was come up with some PCO2 independent variables to assess the metabolic part of the disturbance. And then they come up with these, and they come up with things like standard bicarb, and that's often on our gases. You can actually see the little symbol for standard bicarb. Um, they come up with something called buffer base, and then they come up with base success, which is something we're all very familiar with. And it's got lots and lots of definitions. The titratable base or acid in millimoles per litre needs to titrate blood to a pH of 7.4, a PCO2 of 5.2, and a temperature of 37. And you can read these, but they never actually make anything in my head ever connected. I never really understood until I came across this diagram. It's called the Davenport diagram, and most people have seen it in West's little respiratory book. And it's a thing of beauty. 